You know, this is from a, a series on pediatric cancer. It's one of the neatest things I've ever done, the saddest things I've ever done, the most powerful things I've ever done, is had these random interviews on the pediatric cancer ward of Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital for two weeks with the oncologists, the surgeons, the family, the patients, everybody who was peripherally involved with pediatric cancer. And the reason that that interested me so much because to me, pediatric cancer is like the greatest injustice of nature that there is. And it's the, it's the thing that, I mean, you, when you face it head on, like how do you come out with an idea of a benevolent universe or a benevolent world or justice, you know, when your child has cancer? And I really wanted to meet the people who were fighting this and were seeking to heal this and were seeking to cure this. Um, and, you know, it was one of the, the best series I ever did. The audience raised almost $4 million while we did the series. I was invited to go to five different prisons where I did the exact same interview that I just randomly, you know, developed through stopping people on the streets of New York City to interview inmates, which was such a special experience, you know, to, to give their stories the exact same treatment as anybody on the street. Uh, I've been to uh, about 10 different countries interviewing refugees. Uh, these refugees were in Iraq. That's Pakistan. Spent two weeks there, which is also very proud of. That's Jerusalem, India, Uganda. Um, yeah, I was able to interview President Obama and Hillary Clinton recently. Um, you know, all again, just the exact same style. Like when, when I interviewed both of them. You know, I just, I did it the exact same way on the street. I didn't think of any questions, didn't do any research. You know, I just kind of came in, and the, and the way I normally interview people on the street is, you know, I, I have like two or three questions I started out with normally. Uh, what is your biggest struggle right now? That's a big one. Uh, I find that, you know, that is kind of an invitation for people to just unload what they've been carrying around to that day or that week or that month. So a lot of times that jumps right into the conversation. Um, with Hillary, it was, how do you differ from people's perceptions of you? But normally I only walk in or I approach somebody with like two or three questions. And then after that, it's, it's all an exercise in being very present. You know, I had somebody, it was an inadvertent compliment, but it was a big compliment. A student followed me around one day and he said, you know, I used to think that you were somebody who interviewed somebody and took their photo. Now I, re I realize you're somebody who just goes around and talks with people and then takes their photo, which was a very important distinction because you know the interviews, I don't, I'm never thinking about the next question. I'm just listening very intently to the person. And almost all of my questions are based on something they had just said. You know, they will, I will ask them a question, they'll say something. I will ask a question based on what they just said. They'll say something else. And so you know, they're, they're all about being present and being very conversational and which is the exact same process you know, I did with the refugees, with inmates, and even with President Obama. And you know, I put this picture after that one because obviously you know, that was amazing. The, the ride has been amazing these last six years. You know, bigger than I ever could have imagined. I could give you an idea of like, the kind of success I was going for. Like I, early on you know, with Humans of New York, I was starting to get like 10 new Facebook fans a day that I didn't know. And I remember just doing the math in my head and thinking in three years, if I work every single day, I could have 10,000 Facebook fans. And to me, that represented success. Like maybe I could sell photographs, you know, maybe I could pay my rent with this. Like 10,000 people will be following it. Like that was my idea of what success meant when I started. And now it's become two number one New York Times bestselling books. I've been able to go to 20 different countries with the United Nations. I've interviewed the president of the Oval Office. Like all these amazing things have happened. And you know, when I tell this story, you know, I want to, I don't want to be one of those guys who's like, oh, just do what I do, and all these amazing things will happen to you too. Because a lot of these, I was in the right place at the right time. My idea happened to coincide with social media, Facebooks, pages, things like a lot of them, you know, lucky things happened to me. But 
When I get asked now, what's the best thing about doing Humans of New York, I don't talk about any of that stuff. The best thing was and remains the fact that I get to wake up every single day and choose what work I want to do. And that's important. It's not that I get to wake up and choose not to work, because I think that's a lot of people's ideas of following their dreams. Like, oh, I'm going to get to the point where I drink beers with my friends all day. Like, how am I going to do that? Become famous. You know what I mean? <laughs> and when in reality, following your dreams correctly is nothing but hard work. So it's not the ability to not work that is the ultimate goal. It's the ability to choose your work. And with everything that's happened, the best part of Humans in New York remains the fact that I get to wake up every morning and do exactly what I want to do that day, which remains telling people stories, which is still as exciting as it's always been. And so what I say is that that was my original goal. And while I can't promise this amazing outsized success, outsized success that Humans of New York has happened to bring upon me, you know, that was never the goal. And I am confident if that somebody makes that commitment to their self, that they are going to do whatever it takes to make just enough money to where they can control their time and do what they want to do all day long, and choose their work. That is something that I think everyone can achieve in some way or another. So thank you.